So with the announcement of the third Sonic movie coming out, Sonic over the past few years has been getting a lot of pretty good PR. Not gonna lie. Me personally, I've always been a Sonic fan, although everyone obviously favors Mario because he just has better representation. I just always thought the characters were like really dope. My personal favorites have always been Shadow and Silver, but that's besides the point because they're not even a part of this yet. With every amount of good PR must mean that there are going to be some other creative representations of whatever IP they're using at the time. And in this case, it's Sonic. They did some really messed up stuff to your boy Sonic. So today I wanted to delve into some Sonic horror with you guys. And no, I'm not talking about Sonic EXE. I know I literally do so much Sonic EXE. It's creepy though, bro. What you want me to do about it? Like what you gonna do with this thing behind you and it's just in your house, bro? You telling me this isn't creepy? There are so many souls to play with and so little time to enjoy it. Would you agree? <laughs> Nah, this universe in specific delves into some really creepy, like, gruesome, just, like, terrible stuff sometimes, and jewelry, all of that, dude. But yeah, if you really get down and think about the events of this universe as parallel to, like, the original events of the regular Sonic games and movies and stuff like that, this crap is actually kind of terrifying. Like, you just gotta picture yourself in the position of being in this world. I don't know, you don't know what I'm talking about yet. We are going to get into it, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. So enough idle chat, let's just hop into these animations. This series is called Shin Sonic. Now everyone knows the typical Sonic trope, you know, he's protecting the woodland creatures, robotics capturing them pretty much, using them in his experiments and kidnapping them and doing all kinds of crazy stuff to them, right? That's part of it. And then Sonic comes through, saves the day, thwarts his efforts, Robotnik comes back bigger and better than last time however sonic always still comes out on top that's just the trope that's how it goes however in this story that's not exactly how that happens in this world dr robotnik isn't even really a bad dude he's actually a pretty chill guy see what he's been doing is he's been taking these woodland creatures disabled and handicapped ones and he's been giving them means to have some type of transportation you know so they can live their lives happily you know he's been giving them that sonic however is not cool with that at all because for whatever reason he's using the woodland creatures for sustenance instead of protecting them here and he's he ain't so happy about what uh robotnik was doing getting in his way and messing with his food supply so that brings us to our first tape now this tape entails a home invasion and not a, just a regular home invasion it's sonic invading someone's home can you guess who Yes, it is Dr. Robotnik. He invades his house, and he's not trying to rob him. He ain't here looking for no emeralds, no possession, none of that. He literally just comes in here and murders this man in cold blood. It's literally so gory that they actually censored most of it. Like, you can't even see what you're looking at. Like, I bet his insides are all ripped out and stuff like that. Like, I don't even want to see it. Keep it censored. This tape kind of also leads into the second one, which isn't really a... It's the same kind of tape as this. It's more of an animation here. But it basically outlines what happened in the first one as well, from a different perspective. And in that one, you actually see Sonic. He sees two creatures approaching him. And uh, he wasn't too cool that they were happy and living life and stuff like that. And he seen the one rolling on wheels, and he was just... He got pissed. Because, bro, why are you over here giving wheels to the disabled? That should be easy food for me to eat, right? Yeah, he packs both of them up instantaneously. And he eats. And immediately after that, he goes to find out the reason for why people were getting in the way of his mealtime. So he goes and he finds Robotnik. And he murders the crap out of dude. <laughs> It's just wild to me, because that really puts it in perspective. Is Sonic just using Robotnik to keep himself entertained? Was he just always a villain? Like, think about it. 
If Robotnik was good in the first place, and this is how Sonic was going to react to him being good and actually helping the woodland creatures, since that's kind of his job, you know, if he was doing it, put it in perspective and say he only has anything to do because he's protecting the woodland creatures that Robotnik would be trying to kidnap and experiment on in the games, right? You following? So with Robotnik kidnapping them and experimenting them on stuff like that, Sonic comes in and saves the day. But he never kills Eggman. He just kind of defeats them and lets them run off. You know, the typical trope of pretty much everything else. It's been there since the dawn of time. Batman and Joker, you get what I'm saying? Like, they don't kill their biggest enemy because they, they let it drag out. They like to have their fun. I feel like that's what Sonic's basically doing. He lets them come back and try something else because he knows Robotnik's never going to be able to beat him, bro. And that's kind of like the whole premise of the regular Sonic games and media and stuff. It's just the back and forth exchange between them. But in this world, Sonic was like, nah. So honestly, I, I just kind of feel like Sonic's bored. And, you know, in reality, he probably would have just killed Robotnik. But yeah, the implications of that are crazy too, man. It means there's no more Robotnik. It means there's nowhere, there's no one to stand in this man's way. No one to stop this man's evil, nefarious deeds. He can do whatever he wants because the only one standing up to him was Robotnik up until a certain point. And then he brought in, you know, Metal Sonic and stuff like that. He kept upping his mechs, making him more adaptive to Sonic and his abilities. He kept doing that crap for a long time, but now none of that's even happened because bro is dead bro is packed up bro's folded like a lawn chair he's folded like a love letter and on top of that now we got this super speed bipedal malicious creature running about just doing whatever he wants to yeah nah bro this universe is cooked now that brings us to the actual tape 2 and this one's all about tails so basically sonic's friends they do exist in this universe i don't think all of them are here yet because a lot of them were a d direct result of a lot of the stuff that robotnik did so i don't know what this timeline's looking like but let's assume it's an early on timeline he knows knuckles he knows tails so you would think that if sonic kind of didn't uprising you know he would want his friends to be by his side throughout all of this but no this man is a complete tyrant for some reason yeah, no, the, the, the trope's still the same here, too. Tails is still the punching bag, just like he is in every other form of media of Sonic. Like, if that's there's no differences in how that went. It's the same thing. <laughs> this is literally just a tape where Sonic seeks out Tails, and he does whatever the hell this is to him. He's not dead. Trust me. You'll see him again later, but he does whatever this is to him. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what it is. It looks like he's choking him. Whatever he's doing is evil. You don't grab nobody by their neck with your tongue for an acceptable deed. No, brother. He's doing some malicious BS. But hey, man, at least they're sticking to the source with Tails literally getting packed up and everything for some reason. At the end of this tape, though, we do find out a, a pretty interesting piece of information, and it's that... Sonic has been like rapidly increasing in size, which is new and weird, but no, not even like a little bit. This man is getting gigantic. Like you can, you can see this man's literally too big to fit on the screen now. Yeah, I don't even know what his end goal is, but it's clearly about to be something very crazy. Yeah, so the third tape pretty much just kind of entails some follow-ups from the end of the previous tape. Uh, we tune in to some guy in the forest. I don't know who he is. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know if it's explained. I just know it's a dude in the forest. And he just so happens to run into Sonic. Now look at Sonic now, bro. Why is he that big? Why is he bigger than the tree? He's trying to hide behind the tree like we can't see him. I can see you, bro. Who can't see you, bro? But yeah, after that, he tries to, like, hide, and then we find out what happened to Tails. So here we have Tails. He's still alive, kinda. I don't know, he might be brainwashed or something. Also, there's more than one now. Don't really know how that works, but it's a thing that happened because of something Sonic did. So now he's got an army of Tails, too, which is just great. That helps the situation. So this guy basically runs deeper into the forest and he finds this really creepy looking cow statue thing. I don't know what it is. It has some weird markings on it. But I mean, shortly after that, Sonic literally appears right in front of him in like five seconds and he ends up getting murdered anyways. Yeah, no, they did this man so dirty. 
like apparently they just put his body on top of the statue and then kind of scooped out his insides or ate them out or something i don't know they said bro was hollow by the time they were done like bro looked like a mug he looked like this cup right here that's messed up i'm sorry but yeah bro's body within 24 hours was severely decomposing and he had no insides like they tore this man apart it was crazy but yeah and and right after they made that um discovery they left the scene came back and that statue was gone now i don't know what that statue is but i'm under the clear assumption that it's gonna return because it's clearly something important right after that they pretty much just show how big sonic's got like dude's literally on kaiju levels like he's up there with godzilla it's kind of fire actually i wonder who would win in a fight him at this size or godzilla talking about bro sonic is ending godzilla he's running through him like nothing but yeah he's gargantuan and he's still growing what is the end goal here man bro's trying to become universal and start eating planets like what's the goal bro now we finally get into the tape that talks about what's going on with knuckles uh first things first i don't know if knuckles was on vacation or something or he don't know what's going on i don't know where he comes from but the first thing he sees is these two woodland creatures that sonic packed up in like that little animation uh and then he immediately went to go kill robotic yeah those two creatures he, yeah that, that's the first thing he sees and he's like who could have done this bro where have you been you could have stopped this before it got out of hand where were you bro and immediately after that he runs into uh tails or the husk of him i don't know if this is even tails anymore because he quickly finds out that it certainly is not tails immediately after that guess who appears right behind him big surprise But what is a surprise here is that Sonic doesn't actually murder the, the living crap out of him right here for some reason. I'm surprised if he did, this story would probably be over right here. And also, I don't even know how he didn't die either, or how he got out of the situation. All I know is that this he just suddenly appears in some white whatever, and they're telling him to find the, the, the Super Emeralds? I don't even know who's telling him this. But either way, that's Knuckles' goal, and he somehow escapes alive after that encounter. Yeah, considering Robotnik is dead as hell, it looks like Knuckles is set up to be our uh, protagonist of this story, or at least the good guy. And hopefully he can pull it off, because if not, Sonic is literally taking over the world, bro. And like, look at this man, bro. I've never seen him so distraught before. That is a stance of a determined protagonist who is going to get the job done. I've seen it too many times. Now we move on to the next and current tape as of right now. Um, this is probably like one of the most informative ones because it outlines like a lot of the stuff that's currently happening and uh, There are a lot of things currently happening like here. We have Sonic, right? And you can literally see that he is gigantic at this point Like he's literally bigger than the trees like bros the size of a mountain now and what's worse is he still got super speed bro they said this man literally cleared his way from the forest to like a major city in a couple seconds Everything that was in his way was wiped out. He made a shockwave just by running. Brother is so overpowered. What are you talking about? So basically, Sonic heads into the city, and uh, he's not really attacking any civilians. He's just kind of ignoring most of them, specifically because he's looking for the emeralds. He wants the Chaos Emeralds, and I guess there's one in the city. He doesn't attack anyone for some reason, but he does let out that scream, this really loud, creepy, freaking weird scream. This kaiju scream. He collects his chaos emerald. And he bounces. Bro leaves. That's all he wants. He has a clear goal. I don't even want to know what's gonna happen when he collects all of those chaos emeralds, but he's already got one of them, bro. 
it is not looking good. That means he's gotten even more powerful. All right, and apparently Tails is just kidnapping everyone, and he's duplicating. He's duplicating, and he's literally kidnapped over a thousand people now. Across various countries, mind you. Tails is being a menace in the background, too, for whatever reason. I, maybe Sonic told him to, maybe he's collecting supplies for him to feast on, I don't know what he's doing, bro. But yeah, Knuckles is literally working in the background this whole time, I guess, to, um, I guess, collect the, uh, the Super Emeralds. And after the Super Emeralds are collected, he's going to come back to beat Sonic with them, I guess. I think you literally have to go back in time to get the Super Emeralds, and that's what he's about to do. But the craziest part of it to me is, how do you just have a time machine on standby? Like, I know that's a regular thing in um, Sonic World and the universe and everything like that, but how you just have a time machine? But yeah, the tape basically just ends with Knuckles going back in time, I guess, in search of the Super Emeralds to bring him back to the future. And we're going to see what happens next. My boy seems determined. Like, hopefully he does come back and handle business, because if not, the Earth is doomed, bro. They said it already. <laughs> like, honestly, I can't wait for the, uh, the rest of these when the next parts come out and everything. Because I'm actually really curious as to what path they're going to take with this. Because there's a lot of stuff they can do with this. And this universe itself is... It is horrible and horrendous. And I love everything about that. But I can't wait to see what's actually going to happen. If you were in this universe, what would you do about this situation? There's not much you can do, right? Other than just kind of perish? And... The freak is that? Hold up, y'all. Oh, <laughs> 